subject today is the purpose of the blessing. The purpose of the blessing. Third John verse 2. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prospereth. Our major objective is to understand God's plan for God's plan and purpose. For the blessing and the prosperity of his people. God's plan and purpose. For the blessing and the prosperity of his people. Many people misunderstand the subject of the blessing. The subject of prosperity. They think that when a pastor preaches about money or blessing, it amounts to worldliness or materialism. But that is very far from the truth. And the fact is the following. Number one, God is interested in the blessing and the prosperity of his people. So we must speak about it. He is interested in the blessing and prosperity of his people. Psalm 35 verse 27 said, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause here. Yeah. Let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So God is interested in the blessing and the prosperity of his people. So we speak about it. Secondly, God's people we are the most blessed and prosperous people throughout scripture. They were the most they were the most blessed and prosperous people throughout the whole of scripture. Abraham was richer than anybody in his days. In Genesis chapter 13 verse 2, Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 1, Abraham was old and was stricken in age and the Lord blessed him in all things. That was Abraham. Then you look at Isaac. In Genesis about 26 verse 12 to 14, Isaac sowed in the same land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great for he had possession of flocks and possession of heads and a great store of servants and the Philistines envied him. That wasn't a poor man at all. Then Job, the third example in Job chapter 1 from verse 1, there was a man in the land of earth whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters and then he was a man of substance and was the greatest of all the men of the east. Then in the New Testament, you read of Joseph of Arimathea. In Matthew chapter 27 verse 57, Joseph of Arimathea was that rich disciple that made the demand for the body of Jesus when it was time for him to be buried. So, God is interested in the blessing of people. God's people were the most blessed and prosperous to Throughout Bible history. So we talk about finances. Thirdly. Jesus Christ. Exemplified. 
supernatural abundance and the blessing of God. He exemplified. He exemplified it. Many people quote scripture and they quote it upside down. That Jesus said, um, foxes have holes um, and uh, birds have nests, but the son of man had no place to lay his head. So he must have been very, very poor. No, sir. He had no place to lay his head because he was too busy with the assignment. It wasn't a matter of poverty. Well, how do I know? First of all, Jesus Christ was financially stable enough to have a treasurer. And the treasurer was a thief. John chapter 12 verse 4 to 6 when Mary poured the, 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 the alabaster box the speak now in John chapter 12 verse 4 to 6 John 12 then said one of his disciples Judas is Kairos Simon's son we should betray him why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor now the Bible said this he said not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and he was the one in charge of the money bag. And he bare what was put therein. Jesus was stable enough. In, in, in John chapter 13 verse 29. When he told Judas Iscariot, what thou doest, do it fast. He said, for some of them thought because Judas had the bag. That Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need of against the feast. Or that he should give something to the poor. So Jesus was either buying something or giving something to the poor. And Judas is carried. A confirmed thief was the owner, was the holder of the bag. When last were you rich enough to employ a private personal accountant that is a thief? That is... All of you submit your credentials. I'm employed. I want to employ an accountant treasurer. And after this, submit. And then all of you write all your terrible financial negative exploits in time pass. And then you say, You are the best candidate. I can see that the last time you robbed the bank. And then also, I heard that your father could not keep money anywhere because you stole everything. And then thirdly, you stole all the money in the school. You are my accountant. I have so much money, so hold my money. And let me see how you can steal it enough to finish it. Jesus knew Judas was a thief. Jesus knew Judas was stealing the money. Yet he gave him the money to hold. To confirm the unfinishability. unfinishability of the supply. Steal it until you steal it finish. Let me see. Anyone who said that Jesus was poor and was so poor that uh, this and that, he didn't know who Jesus was at all. Somebody say loud amen. Jesus moved with sufficient transportation every time. In Mark chapter 4 verse 36 At the rounding off shortly as we move And when they had sent away the multitude They took him Even as he was in the ship And there were also with him Other little ships There was a master ship and little ships That conveyed him and his disciples For their assignment Jesus wasn't poor at all Why do I say so? Because he bore the responsibility of 12 matured men and their family. When Jesus said, Peter, follow me. James, follow me. John, follow me. All of you, follow me. It means from this day forward, as long as you are with me, I take care of you. How do I confirm that? In John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. One of those days when he was going to Samaria. The Bible said, they are coming to a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away. 
to the city to buy food, not to beg for food. To buy food. When Jesus in John chapter 6 wanted to multiply five loaves and two fishes, he told his disciples, give them food to eat. And Philip said, where can we find bread enough to buy for these people? Not where, how, not how do we get money to buy bread? When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, when shall we buy bread? Where shall we buy that this may eat? Not how do we get money to buy. That is 5,000 men apart from women and children. And anywhere there is miracle, women are more than men. You know women like miracle. <laughs> so if there are 5,000 men, there are maybe 10,000 women. That's 15,000. And if the women came with two children each, that's 20,000 plus 10, 30 plus 5, 35,000. Where can we buy bread to, buy, to feed 35,000 people? Not how can I get money. Money is available. And Jesus said, as my father sent me, so I sent you. There is someone here today. Every garment of poverty and wretchedness in your life shall be scattered by fire. It shall be torn to shreds. Shall the Lord say amen. So, Jesus had those. And finally, Jesus had those who ministered substance to him. Luke chapter 8 verse 3 talked about Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod, steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him from their substance. He didn't go from house to house begging people for money. Ministered to them of their substance. Someone say a louder amen. Of their substance. So, why do we what is the fact? First, God is interested in the blessing of his people. Second, God's people are the most blessed and prosperous throughout scripture history. Thirdly, Jesus exemplified abundance and the blessing of God. And fourthly, the love of money. Not money itself is the root of evil. Not money. It is the love of money, not money itself. Because people say, don't talk about money because money is the root of all evil. No, that is quoting the scripture like the devil. Because the devil at times quotes scriptures and take one, verse, one, one word out of it. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10, it is the love of money, not money itself. Can I say something to you now? Money is neutral. Money is amoral. It's neutral, it's in the middle. It takes on the character of the possessor. What, what becomes of money is determined by who is holding the money. Am I communicating? I'll give you an example. A, a wicked man has money and he gave a hired killer. I heard that somebody was killed who had won election last week and was killed yesterday only as he went to vote. Obviously, they were looking for him. Terrible country we live in, but things are changing. A hired killer, sorry, a killer, a murderer. Money in his hand means more sorrow. More sorrow. More wickedness, more evil. 
So he gives a hired killer who went and killed somebody on his behalf. That hired killer went to the market with the money of blood to buy food to eat. And he bought food and gave the food seller money. You went to the market to buy food and you bought the food and the food seller gave you change from the money that was just paid him. That was blood money. But you didn't know. So is it, are you a terrible person for handling the money that was paid somebody to kill somebody? No, you are not aware. In your own hands, that money delivered somebody from death. The person is in the hospital. If he didn't pay 30,000 or 300,000, they release, discharge him and he goes to die. You paid the 300,000. In the hand of one man, the money killed person. In your hand, the money saved person. So who is bad is not the money. It is who holds the money that determines what the money will do. Are you following what I'm saying now? There are many people today who in whose hand money misrode. Money misrode. They die with billions in account. Their village has no light. Old people are dying in their numbers. Children are not going to school. He can spare just a few millions. And 10,000 children are in the university. Just a few millions. And that wouldn't scratch his account. Well, we gave scholarship to about 50 university students. And they told me how much it cost. I said, is that all? Was that 20, 20 at first? Huh? It's, when I said, put 20 people on scholarship from foundation to graduation. They told me the amount. I said, is that all? Add another 20. And, and we are going to be adding. I'm sure it is far more in far in excess. Far, far, far more beyond that right now. It depends on who carries the money. That is why you need to hold money to do the right thing. That is why, yeah, 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 yeah. That is why there must be a change of finance of cash traffic. It must enter your hand to save lives, to deliver your generation, to deliver the poor. If you are a believer, they shout the loudest, amen. amen. Having said that, very quickly, I'll be round enough. What then? Is the purpose of the blessing of God. The blessing of God, like I said, is given for clearly defined purposes. Miles Monroe of blessed memory said, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. The reason why God's people must possess financial resources, like I just explained, is different from the reason why the people of the world seek to possess money. The people of the world seek it for selfish purposes many times. They seek it purely for the inflation of their ego. They seek it to, for, for the oppression and intimidation of the poor. So that they can come and they can say they are the, only, they are the wealthiest in their town. They are, the, they are the biggest in their town. They are, they, are the, they are the most important. Nobody can be like them. And that is, that, is, that, is the, that is the picture of small, smallness. God's purpose for blessing his people includes, but it is not limited to the following. Number one, serving God in satisfaction without distraction. God wants you to possess resources so you can serve him in full satisfaction and without distraction. 
The Bible said that God wants us to, you shall love the Lord your God according to Mark chapter 12 verse 28 to 30. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. The scribes came and they were reasoning and perceiving that he answered them when he asked, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. All your strength. How do you love the Lord with all your mind? When you are seated in church, and how strength has expired. And they gave you quit notice. And the lawyer said, and your landlord said, police people are waiting at your house. Pack your load from outside. When you return from church, when you are seated in the church, how do you serve the Lord with all your mind? No. No. One day, I was traveling to, to London. In the air, I was sleeping. Well, let me call it the trance because that was what it was. And I saw a woman saying, it is time for, for, for children to go back to school and I don't have money and my husband has died. I saw it in, in, in a trance and I, I got up. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, there are women like this crying. When you go back home, look for them. So I came home and I said, in case you are here, it's time for children to go to school and you are wondering how, let us see you. That was how the women of destiny empowerment started. The, widow, the, the, the people who lost their husband and so on. How do you serve God with all your mind? When you don't have transportation to come to church and you wonder how to go home, God said, I want to bring you to a point where there is no infirmity. Somebody say infirmity. And no poverty. No infirmity, no poverty, no calamity takes your focus off me. That was what he said in Joel chapter 2. And in verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. He said, I want, see, there are times where praise is effortless. Satisfaction is a fuel for appreciation. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise. You don't beg people to praise. You don't beg people to dance when everything is working. Somebody say amen. Please understand that supernatural provision facilitates deeper devotion. If you know exactly what you are doing with your life, I am not talking of those who are looking for money and they get money and marry a second wife. That's not the kind of money I'm talking about. If you know what you are doing with your life, when money arrives, it deepens your walk with God. It makes you to be able to do the things that are on your heart to do. Look at what Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8 to 9 said. To show you something. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Neither give me poverty nor riches. He will explain just now. Feed me with food convenient for me. In case I am full, that is those of low level devotion and deny you. I have big houses, big cars and everything. And I stopped going to church. Don't give me any kind of money that will take me to hell. Then he said, oh, I be poor and still. So poverty and iniquity are close together. 
I be poor and still and take the name of my God in vain. A young girl is selling her body to feed and to send money to her family at home because of poverty. I met one young girl 23, 24 years ago with my wife at the um, UTC junction. And this girl was living a prostitutious life. And after preaching to her, and we said, repent, she said, if I repent, my mother, my father, my family will die of hunger. This is what I need to do for them to survive. And we said to her, if you die of hunger, and if they have to die because you want to stand upright, let it go ahead. But God will surprise you. And she came out of that life neat. Later on, she got married. Married to a pastor. And her family was rescued. Poverty and iniquity are closed. Prosperity and stability are closed. Am I communicating? Poverty can make a young girl marry the wrong husband. Ay, 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 ay. Poverty is a destruction. The man came and your family is so poor. And you are looking for somebody to rescue you and your family from poverty. And you said yes, not because you love him, but because there is house rent that is due. And you married the man. And right from the reception of the wedding, you started regretting. Right from where? Wedding reception. But when you are already established, you had your car, you had your house, you had your money, you had everything. When the man comes, you are not looking at his car, you are not looking at his house. You are not looking at anything because you have your own. You look beyond the container, you are not looking at the content. Does this man have character? Can he love his wife? Can he respect my mother? Can he respect myself? Will he go to church with me? Can he take me to heaven? Is he interested in soul winning? Many wrong decisions are made from poverty. Scarcity, shortage. Wrong steps made from poverty. Is it not poverty that made all those people to change election figures? Chronic poverty. Maybe he's a professor, maybe he's a, a youth copper, maybe he's something. He hasn't seen 50,000 or 100,000 at once. Somebody gave him 100,000, he lost his mind. He lost his mind, he lost his, he temporarily lost his mind. And just say, they say write 1,000 votes. You say, why not? Only 1,000, what of 2,000? When you are loaded and you are stable and they say change it, they say go to hell. You and your devil. You and your devil. It's not everybody you can compromise. Go to hell with your devil. And those who are wealthy deliberately keep the poor poor. So that they can manipulate them and remote them with money. People are selling their vote for the highest bidder. If you say one, you say the other. You say, how much will you pay me for vote? 5,000? No, I cannot give you my vote for 5,000. So I say 7,000, okay. Let me think about it. I'm waiting for another person. Poverty. Nothing gives dignity like prosperity. Nothing causes you to have your... The reason why I preach with any audacity I want is that I am not looking for anybody's money. You are not paying me so you can't determine what I say. We are the generation of those who reject money. If you come and you bring money and we don't know where it's coming from, say go back with your money. So 
somebody take your seat in the presence of the Lord. This is very important. That is why God must empower you. And I decree somebody is living here today. Generational poverty in your lineage is over forever. And God is going to use you to wipe away that reproach from your family forever. Shout the loudest. Amen. Serving God in satisfaction without distraction is number one purpose. Number two, glorifying God with our lives and attracting the lost to God is number two. Glorifying God with our lives and attracting the lost to God. That is people see how good your life is. And they want to know the kind of God that did you such good. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 9. Said, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. And their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the seed. Which the Lord has blessed. All that see them. They will just say okay. I used to know this man. I used to know this man. And his life changed like this. I want to follow him. I want to follow him. I want to follow him to know his God. They shall acknowledge. Your result is more evangelistic than your utterance. What God has done in your life speaks more than the things you are trying to say. He said, let your light so shine. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. That they may behold your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Can somebody say a loud amen? amen? Can somebody say a louder amen? amen? One day, a classmate of mine came from America. He said, I have heard that you have given your life to Christ. I used to know you in secondary school. And I now know that they say you are a, a pastor. I see the hand billboard everywhere. And I told them, until I see you face to face, I won't believe that you are the one. So he came and he saw me, looked at me. He said, are you the one? I said, I'm the one. What happened? I told him the story. He said, all right, pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. And as from today, I will consult you for every decision of my life. There is something God will do with you. There is something God will do with you that will make people want to identify with that God who did it for you. One of my sisters told me one day, the same father. He said, sir, can you pray for me? I said, for what? He said, for a husband. I said, what kind of husband? He said, your type. <laughs> I said, my type like how? He said, in everything. Yeah. I'm a doctor. He said, yes. And I want him. And so on and so forth. And I prayed for her. And God heard her. Hello? Why? They see what God has done in your life and they want it verbatim. Somebody came to me one day and said, a man has come to marry me and the man's surname is like your surname. He has the same surname. I said, check him very well. The same surname doesn't mean the same person. <laughs> I am saying that to say there is something God will do in your life that will cause people to associate and identify at all costs. That kind of thing that will make people say where is your God? Today is the end of it forever. Not, not that you are inviting people to church and they say which church? Let 
God change your life first. That, that error of reproach in your life is over forever. Somebody say it loud, amen. amen. Lift your right hand and say in the name of Jesus. 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 I receive that help to glorify God with my life and attract the lost with my result. Look, look at an example. You went to your village to do a crusade and you are doing the crusade where you commissioned the borehole. Hello? Commissioned the borehole. Commissioned the health center for the village. And you are commissioning maybe a public convenience. And you say crusade, crusade, crusade. Will the villagers come? They went since. Or you are distributing the crusade handbill with helicopter. Inside village. <laughs> Beloved, it is far better to have resources if you are in your senses than to lack it. So glorifying God is number two. Number three, existing. All right, now, now, before I go to number three, First Kings chapter 10 verse 1 to 10 showed us how the queen of Sheba came all the way and she was literally converted because she saw what God had done with Solomon. That is what God wants to do with your life and my life. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three is existing as a blessing to the world. First of all, God wants you blessed to give you satisfaction. Secondly, he wants you blessed so that his blessing on your life can pull somebody to know him through you. That is the God who did it for you. I want to follow you to that God. Thirdly, God wants you blessed so you can be a blessing to the world. Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 and 3 and I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And in Genesis 14, 14, Abraham, when he heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house. 318 that was a man who was training other people's children. Other people's children. He was training other people's children. In, in our school here, I went to the principal and I said, every child that is in examination class, SS3, or JS3 that has a problem with school fees, let me know. I said to him, I said, don't let no child be turned back on account of school fees, especially in that exam class. And he told me, it's worked out for those set of people. And one of the fathers came on his knees, almost in tears. Thank you for rescuing us. Thank you for rescuing our family. That is the meaning of money. The purpose of income is impact. Riches without outreach is wretchedness. Take your seat. You are, not, you are not a big deal because you have anything. You are only something if you can tell us how many people benefited from whatever you have.
God is permanently interested in the welfare of the poor, the welfare of the widow, the welfare of the orphan, the welfare of the less privileged. In James chapter 1 verse 27, he said, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Not visit with empty hand, empty handedly. To reach out to them. That's the meaning. Reach out to the widows. And then keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's God's purpose. Job chapter 29 verse 11. My time is up and I begin to round off now. Job 29 11 to 12. Job said when the ear heard me it blessed me. Then they, and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cried. And the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Psalm 72 verse 10 to 15. You can write that down because of time. The kings of Tashis is the psalm of Solomon. And the, and the earth shall bring presents. The kings of, of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Why? Yeah, all the kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth. The poor also and him that has no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. And precious shall their blood be in his sight. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. He said, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith. That is, inside this house, there are people in need. And I am not talking of people who are permanently sitting inside church looking for who to beg. There is an appropriate channel. There is a welfare channel. Because in the middle of that, there are all manner of criminal minded people. A position here and there. They stand at the car parks and, and just, just stand to tackle people. I'm not talking of such people. I am talking of genuine people whose needs are authenticated. Needs authenticated. The home church system and the system existing. And I am talking of those who don't want to remain needy forever. Who want to come to the point where they are the ones that want to give to others. Beloved, there are many scriptural instructions you cannot obey if you lack money. <laughs> you didn't hear what I just said. There are many scriptures you cannot obey due to scarcity. He says you should give to your neighbor. And you don't have even to eat. Our people say if you don't have to eat, will you donate for teacher? <laughs> In those days, they used to donate egg and donate things for teacher. In primary school, everybody bring your own donation for the teacher. And then the person say, that is bring egg, bring yam, bring seed. And they give to primary school teacher in those days. And somebody say, I don't have what to eat. Will I donate to teacher? <laughs> That's nice. He said, give to the poor. He said, me too. I'm looking for who to give me. I'm sure you heard the story before. In, 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 in the particular service, they said, all widows, lift up your hand so we can reach out to you at the end of the service. Then the woman lifted her hand and her husband is sitting beside her. She lifted her hand. And the woman and the husband said, what are you doing? I am sitting here. They say, widow. The woman said, leave me alone. My condition is not worse than widow. <laughs> She said, this condition is worse than widow. I know I'm married, but this is worse than widow. That will never be your portion. That will never be your portion. That will never be your portion. 
I say that will never be your portion. Some people went to hell because I was sick. You didn't visit me. I was in prison. You didn't care for me. Now, there are times where people don't, don't care for the poor because they don't have a heart for the poor. But there are times where people don't care for anybody because they lack the means. You remember the story of the Good Samaritan? The priest came, passed by the other side. Maybe he had no money to assist. The Levi came, look on the other side. He had no money to, to assist. But the Good Samaritan, the Bible said, he came down from his beast. They didn't mention that any of the other people had beasts. <laughs> and you know, beast is a car. He came back down from the beast. Ministered to the man. Poured oil and poured wine. Those were the things that they collected money in in those days. And put him on his own beast. Took him to an innkeeper. Gave the man money. And said, if there is change when I pass, I will pay. Somebody say, money talk. So when you lack resources, you appear wicked to people without them knowing. You know some of our people here say, See, our brother went to America 22 years ago. He's so wicked. He doesn't remember anybody. It's no wickedness. So. For some of them, <laughs> he's looking for survivor. Maybe he's cleaning dead bodies in a mortuary somewhere there. And what they are paying him is using it to pay bills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even money reduces the, the tension and heat of life. I'll talk about that shortly. <laughs> that was number three. And I'm quickly number four. What is the purpose of money, of, 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 of the blessing? Serving God in satisfaction, glorifying God with our lives, existing as a blessing to the world. Number four, expanding the kingdom of God on the earth. Expanding the kingdom of God on the earth. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. Kingdom establishment, kingdom expansion is a major purpose for money. Churches are built with money. Missionaries are sent out with money. Tracks are printed. Evangelistic materials are printed with money. On the opposite, terrorists are sponsored with money. Do you know the price of one AK-47? It's not 100,000. It's not 200. It's not 1 million. One. So the devil wants to keep the church from resources that is needed for revival and evangelism and massive resources in the hands of killers. Somebody said no more. A time will come very soon that some of you seated here, only you will build the church from foundation to roofing. <laughs> Furnish it with the chairs. Furnish it with the sound system. And hand over the key to the church. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. I'm personally looking forward to doing like one, two, or three of that kind of thing this year. From foundation to roofing. And you say, church, take. I don't have the time. In Psalm 122 verse 9. In the NIVs, David said, the old NIV, the ancient one, the, the, the original one, he said, for the sake of your house, I will seek your prosperity. Because your house must prosper. I need your prosperity. In order to build your house, give me money. 
In Psalm 132 verse 105, David said, I will not give sleep to my eyes until I find God a house. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. I, t I told you one funny story before. When I married newly, I was not a pastor at all. I was a young medical doctor. I think our salary was 2,400 or 1,000. It was 1,200 and increased to 2,400. That kind of a thing. And I went to preach and my young wife followed me. We didn't, we didn't have our first child yet. We are just fresh. After I finished preaching fire and brimstone message, the coordinator of the youth fellowship came and he said, uh -huh, the pastor has finished preaching. Thank, or, or rather, the doctor has finished preaching. Now, that donation I talked about, all of you bring your one one naira. He was talking. So I went to him, I said, excuse me, how much are you trying to raise? He told me the amount. I said, okay, me and my wife, we will pay all the money, okay? This message the people heard now, I want them to go and think about it. Don't talk of money now. That was since then. Since then. That's the purpose. Whenever they invite me to an uncompleted church building, as far as I'm concerned, they invited me to assist in the construction. That may not be their intention, but I can't see it and look away. Impossible. Impossible. There are individuals seated here because of you the kingdom of God will advance that amen can be better the kingdom of God will advance please note down the following scriptures and then we shall round off Exodus chapter 12 verse 36 God gave the children of Israel money and then Exodus chapter 35, verse 4 to 10, he demanded for that same money he gave them to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. And then Exodus chapter 36, verse 5 to 7. They gave until it was too much. And he gave a commandment that they should stop giving. It will happen like that very, very soon. So we are to serve God without distraction we are to glorify God and draw people to God we are to exist as a blessing we are to expand the kingdom and finally why does God give us the blessing it is number five fulfilling covenant promises about the blessing God gives his people money to confirm that he is the one who promised he blesses his people to validate his promise. Promise where? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God. He is the one that gives you money and power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the, seat of the way of sinners. Nor seated in the seat of his comfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his Lord of him meditate day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Like what scripture? Psalm 35, verse 27. The Lord taketh pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Like what scripture? Psalm 37, verse 25. I have been young, and now I am old. I have not seen this righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. He is ever merciful, and he lended, and his seed is blessed forever. Like what scripture? Psalm 30, Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasure. Like which scripture? Obadiah chapter 1 verse 21. But upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. Now, verse 17. 
there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of J Jacob shall possess their possessions and saviors shall come out of Mount Zion in verse 21 saviors shall come out of Mount Zion people that will rescue others shall come out of Mount Zion like with scripture second Corinthians 8 9 I want you to take note of this one very well he said for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that you through his poverty is that in your Bible everybody read it want to go your neighbor say it is in the bible it's in the bible next time you see someone who said no god wants you to be as poor as the church right because in your poverty it's in your integrity tell him it's a lie if that does not convince you what about revelation chapter 5 verse 12 saying everybody read it want to go say with a loud voice Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive what? Power and what? Riches and what? Wisdom and what? Strength and what? Honor and what? Glory and what? Curses. Is that what he said? Hey! And then Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. And then in verse 18, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth to us scantily, poorly, empty handedly. He giveth how? Richly. How many things? All things to suffer. He went too fast. Verse 17, he giveth us all things to suffer, to struggle, to eat guguru and uh, permanently. He gave us all things to what? That is the Bible. It shall be fulfilled in your life. In your life. Well, God blesses his people to say to them, I am not a man to lie. Numbers 23, 19. I gave you all these promises. I cannot lie. God is not a man that he should lie. And not the son of man that he should repent. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has spoken it, he will make it good. And then in Psalm 89, verse 34 to 35. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. The Lord bless his word. So why will you be blessed? Number one is for what purpose? So that you can serve God and not be distracted. Number two, to glorify God with your life and attract the lost to God. Number three, to exist as a blessing to the world. Number four, to expand the kingdom of God on the earth. And number five, to fulfill covenant promises about the blessing. Let me give you two keys. And the, the whole of this month, ensure you don't miss a service so that you can get the full detail. Number one, possess quality understanding. How do you qualify the, for the blessing? Number one, possess 
quality understanding concerning the purpose of God for the blessing. Let this understanding be rooted. Because wisdom and knowledge bring stability. Isaiah 33 verse 6. And Psalm 82 verse 5. When they know not, the foundation of, of the world is out of course. Possess quality understanding. I am not just looking for money just for braggadocious purpose. I am, I am going to be very rich to use the money God will give me to deliver the oppressed. To pull people to God as they see my life. To, to expand the kingdom and chase the devil back to hell. And get the lost to be saved. Possess that quality understanding. I prove to God that you know the purpose of the blessing. You go before him and let him know. Lord, I know the purpose. And I'm willing to apply your blessing in my life to that purpose. Do you know what Proverbs chapter 1 verse 32 said? He said the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. That is those who don't understand the reason for money. Give them money you have killed them. You killed, you killed them. You wasted the man. You gave him money. You killed him. Possess quality understanding concerning the purpose of God for the blessing. And secondly... Research the secrets of the blessing and walk in them. Research. That is what we are going to be dealing with in the whole of the month. The secrets of the blessing. Then walk in them. Research the secrets of the blessing and walk in them. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2. If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, all these blessings shall come upon you. You know that there are no secrets, no, there is no success without secrets and there, is, there are no products without principles. Research the secrets. That was what made Job. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 2 to 4. Job said, as I was in the days of my youth. Sorry, Job chapter 29 2 to 4. Oh, that as I wear in, in the months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my hair, and when by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. And when you read from verse 11 down, that secret of God made Job an enviable personality. That secret is coming your way. This midweek service, we shall look extensively at the dividends of the blessing. When the blessing comes, what else comes? Don't miss it for anything. And then Saturday, we are still dealing with the several issues regarding our supplies at the home church. And when we arrive at Sunday, we look at the way of the blessing. What, how, how do I walk? What are the secrets to swim in the blessing? I can tell you from a practitioner's point of view that this thing works. It works effortlessly. The first time Papa Yedekbo came to this ground, when he came to break the ground, what he said, I will never forget. He said, what you, talking to me, what you are doing has validated what we are doing. Anybody remember that? He said, it has confirmed that this thing does not only belong to some people alone. That it is workable by anybody. I thought it would have been the other way around. I thought it was the one whose work validates what we are doing. But that is how it is. It works anytime, anywhere, any day. There are testimonies we cannot share. Otherwise, some people will run mad. Not you. Not you. You will understand and you will look forward to it. So, beloved, I welcome you to this frequency of the blessing. 
and by the anointing that we are going to apply today. Anybody brought a bottle of oil? If you didn't bring somebody around you, might help you and put a little oil in your hand. Anybody who is a trader or a seller here this morning? Market person, wave your hand, let me see you. All right, perfect. Who came here for the first time? Not members of the church. Who, who came here for the first time? Market person or a, a sales person or a trades person. Excellent, you are welcome. I believe that that blessing also is going to change what you do. In the name of Jesus. Who is blessed today? Lift up your right hand. You get the oil close by, but don't open it yet. I'll tell you when to open it. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are. Thank the Lord for what you have received so far.